Hey guys, Jonathan and Tim, we're back again in the library. One room First of all, house. I want you to know that we had to practice that because he started a second ago and said, hey, I'm Tim, and then realized, no, I'm not. So we're working on this. We're... Uh, it's been so long. I, ironically, ironically, we do remember things from a long time ago, much better apparently than modern names uh, like who you work with and for. Sorry. But that's okay. All this hair is suppressing my <laughs> my brain function. It, it's fair. We all need haircuts unless you're like a governor or mayor. <laughs> the mayor of Chicago getting um, it. Oh, I saw that. I was livid. Well, and that's okay because they practice social distancing except for when they took the picture right beside each other. But other than that, it's fine. I'm only a little bitter because I want a haircut too. Um, nonetheless, we'll keep going on. So we've been talking this week uh, about some American heroes, looking at yep. some some African Americans, some black heroes in America, people that should be remembered. We talked yesterday about maybe some of the reasons why they're forgotten, looking at Woodrow Wilson's influence yeah. and how that was the standard. His, his textbooks were the standard used in public schools. And so, so many of the heroes that had been present for a hundred years before in history books. Completely wiped away. Absolutely forgotten. And that was the standard. I mean, really, that set the tone from the progressive era coming forward for decade after decade after decade to where now, when modern writers are writing books, they don't even know some of these stories that used to be very obvious. And so it's, it's led to things like we talked about the, the 1619 Project. 1619 Project. And we'll open it up here. And you can find a lot of this stuff online. I, just going through it, it's, it's pretty fun. But this quote right here says, Our founding ideals of liberty and equality were false when they were written. And this goes into the general idea that right, the founding fathers, you know, obviously... Well, and actually, yeah, so let's, let's oh, yeah, read yeah. the next line because it's worth noting. Black Americans fought to make them true. Without this struggle, America would have no democracy at all. Okay, now, is it true that black Americans fought for equality? Absolutely, Absolutely it is true. There's no doubt about it. What is left out and, and kind of the message, the tone that was suggested is that no white people were in favor of black equality. Blacks had to fight against white people for equality. And the reality is in America that had it not been for so many of the white leaders, there would not arguably have been the equality that was recognized in America because it really was so many white abolitionists helping lead the charge in America. Now, many great black heroes along the way, as we've talked about some this week, but there's this false narrative and notion that goes around that in American history, the white people were the oppressors, the blacks were always the victim, and although certainly there were times you can see that, this is a perception we get generally of white people being bad and generally of black people being victims until right more recent times and, and Martin Luther King Jr. and the civil rights movement and, and all these great things happened since then. The problem is we have a very a very oversimplistic notion yeah, of the view generalized. of humanity, of slavery in yeah, general. Right. I think we mentioned it earlier in the week that our starting point in history is right, the, the Romans idea from St. Paul that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And if it's sinful, that means it's common to all humanity. And we can look back in the history of slavery. I mean, it goes all the way back to basically the beginning. And we see that every people group, every nation, every race, every culture has at various points in their time both been enslaved and been slave. Yeah. owners and in fact it's actually been historically documented that prior to the 1700s globally there were more white slaves than there were black slaves in fact it's thought that the word slave even comes from talking about the uh, the slavs um, and how they were enslaved in various different people groups and then once right the discovery of the new world all of a sudden they go Columbus actually enters into a slave society it's been documented that the societies that Columbus discovered and then this is now we're talking about Native Americans yeah Native Americans right? so what Columbus discovered like the people who were yeah. living here the natives to the land and and it was called America, so Native Americans, but they were the natives living here already had slaves. About 15 to 25 percent of all the Native Americans before any sort of European contact were enslaved, obviously by other Native Americans, because Europeans hadn't even come to America yet. And those are people that have been completely yeah. isolated. And, and, and this is not to disparage a specific people group, because this is the history of every people yeah. group, right? Because as we mentioned, this goes back to really the kind of the fallen human nature, Absolutely. that all of sin and fallen short of the glory of God. It would be foolish for us to say that specific 
sins only affect certain people? What if we said, well, pride only affects this racial group and lust only affects yeah. that racial group and jealousy, right? That would be so stupid because no, 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 we recognize that all people are impacted and affected. Now, not every individual is impacted the same way, but as a people, as humanity, we certainly are. And so when you look at the history of slavery, as mentioned, it wasn't really until the expansion of the North Atlantic slave trade yep. that, that black slavery was becoming predominant around the world, certainly in America. But even saying predominant in America, this is where the numbers get interesting because Absolutely. the slaves coming out of Africa, roughly 12 and a half million slaves mm -hmm. Over were the taken of out of Africa. Over the course of 150 years, right from the now, beginning. Now, bef before we back up, because I, I, Jonathan, I want you to go into these details. Before we get into too many of those details, it's also worth noting, how did those people get into slavery? Oh, yeah. Well, it happened because, right, you have... Uh, honestly, it starts with the Portuguese and the Spaniards. They go, they start making these trading facilities along the African coast. And then, right, and largely they're trading in gold, they're trading in ivory. And then they start also trading in slaves. And what would happen is you would have the African chieftains, the, the kings of the tribes, they would conquer a different tribe. And then they would march those conquered tribesmen to the coast to then sell them to either Muslim traders, if it's along the North African coast, and then along the Ivory and Gold Coast, uh, along the more the Atlantic coast of Africa, it would be the Portuguese and the Spanish traders. And, and right, imagine if somebody comes to you and says, hey, we're going to give you money for all the people you can deliver to us. And this is a conquest era, right? So it's very common to for one tribe to conquer another tribe, for one people group to conquer another people group. Now, generally, it's for more than just monetary gain. However, when monetary gain becomes a very realized situation that you can actually go kidnap somebody and sell them for profit, and then you can make a lot of money, you can do very well, you see the growth of this yep, industry. Absolutely. So as the industry grows, right, over the, the years of the North Atlantic slave trade, 12 and a half million slaves are shipped off coast. So go somewhere to Europe, go somewhere over to North South America, but this is where the numbers get really interesting. Yeah, because, right, obviously when we talk about slavery in America, we think America is the primary uh, bad guy in this story. But yeah, the primary recipient of the yeah, slaves, right? right? Like, all the slaves from yeah, Africa the slaves came probably to all came to America because the white people are bad is kind of the notion that's being promoted today. But actually, statistically, America was one of the two lowest recipients. And I'm talking about, right, the 13 colonies, what's continental America received, what is it, 3.2% of all the slaves yeah, coming so, out so of Africa? Depending on how you break it down, so, so really it's, it's about 2.4% 2 of the slaves that came out of Africa that came to the 13 colonies, because you had other colonies um, that were up in Canada, some down in Florida, but generally now you're talking about the French and Spanish colonies, so more came to North America. But the vast majority of them went to South America. Yeah, the vast Brazil. majority went to Europe. It was a very small percentage that came to America. Now, that's not to say that's okay, that America is now suddenly okay for doing this. Of course not. Everybody who was part of this was doing something that was bad. However, this was something largely culturally accepted as far as slavery yeah. is considered, that th this was not an unusual thing. But America was still unique mm -hmm. in the fact that America wrote a law. Now, the law didn't go into effect for 20 years, but when we did the Constitution, we were the first nation to write a law saying that we're going to abolish the slave trade. Yeah. Interestingly, England and America both end up signing the law the same year. Well, England then does go ahead and finally end slavery before America does. And then... As a nation... As a nation. Even if we break it up and look at just the northern states, the northern states in America led the globe in the effort to end slavery. And in fact, by 1804, every single northern state had passed laws for the abolition of slavery, whether immediate or gradual emancipation. And then by 1810, 99 percent of all the African Americans in the northern states had been freed. So this is 1810. This is still 20 years before England gets around to ending slavery in their domains. And then obviously, right, we talked about earlier how even going to the Revolutionary War, one of the reasons why America was trying to separate was because England wasn't allowing them to end slavery even right. at that and This early was a week period. or so ago with, yeah. with Thomas Jefferson's original draft of the Declaration where he said that the king is enslaving these men, won't allow us to free them, etc. And, and I would encourage you, go back, read Jefferson's original draft of the Declaration. Really interesting. And, and, and so, right, the point is, as you go forward in America, America was not a perfect nation. In fact, we made many mistakes. And Absolutely. yet, we were one of the very first nations to end slavery. And it does become significant today because 
Today at the United Nations, there are more than 90 nations that are current nations of the United Nations where slavery is still legal. Yep, no laws on the books saying you can't hold somebody for perpetual bondage. And, and, and many of those nations do have slaves today. Yes. Right? So you can look at nations like China, like India. We can go around Asia. Yeah. We can go around Europe. We can go to Africa. Africa. Sub-Saharan Africa is, in fact, one of the main locations for slavery today, just owned inside their own borders. And in fact, it's been documented that today, right now, as we're talking, there are more people in slavery than the entirety of American history in the world. A lot of people in China, a lot of people in Asia, like you mentioned, Tim, you can go online and, and find those studies. It's really interesting to look at. And it's also interesting because right in America, the discussion goes so much about, you know, 200, 300 years ago, but so few people are looking at the issue right now right. and what we can do to stop it. Yeah, and, and, and obviously we're not trying to yeah. justify anything Absolutely. America did that was wrong. No, that, obviously that was wrong. It's just, it's dishonest to pretend like America was the only one doing something wrong at a time when everybody was doing it, right? Everybody's been the kid who got angry for getting in trouble for doing what everybody else was doing. This is what's silly is to say America was bad and not talk like anybody else did it or is still doing it because this still happens today. But let's back up to America because as was mentioned, the, especially the Northern colonies, they were the ones leading the yeah. way Massachusetts. with abolishing slavery by Pennsylvania. So many of these states were doing things. And so that brings us back right to the founding fathers. The sign of the, of the declaration today, largely we hear, well, we know these guys almost all of them own slaves. And I've talked with professors before who have said, well, we know that all the founding fathers were racist slaveholders. And I remember talking to this professor saying, okay, well, um, who do you know that had slaves? He said, well, well, Jefferson had slaves. I said, he did. Who else? He said, well, I'm not sure. I said, well, what about, what about John Adams? Did he have slaves? He said, well, all the others had slaves. I said, are you sure John Adams did? Because I'm pretty sure John Adams never had slaves and was always against slavery his whole life. He said, oh, well, I don't know about John Adams, but all the others did. I said, oh, well, what about Sam Adams? He said, well, I'm not sure about Sam Adams. I said, because I'm pretty sure Sam Adams never had slaves and was always against slavery his whole life. He said, oh, well, I don't know about Sam Adams either, but all the rest did. So I started going through a list of people that were founding fathers that never had slaves, that were always against slavery their whole life. And finally he says, okay, Tim, I don't actually know who did and didn't have slaves, but I know the majority of the founding fathers were against slavery. And I said, okay, so here's the problem. Right? You don't know who did or who didn't, but we've bought into a generalization without knowing the story. And this is where when you look back at the founding fathers, there's no doubt the majority of them at some point in their life did own slaves. But the question that is never asked or answered is, but how many of them ended up freeing their slaves? How many of them ended up opposing slavery? How many of them ended up starting or working for abolition movements trying to help end slavery, and not just in America, but in the world? This is where the story gets interesting because you can look at guys like Benjamin Franklin and Benjamin Rush, both of them from Pennsylvania. Both of them were slaveholders and both of them freed their slaves. And then they both, uh, Benjamin Rush and Benjamin Franklin, both started the Abolition Society of Pennsylvania. Benjamin Rush then tried to make that a national society. And, and we could go through the list of founding fathers. This is an important question that doesn't get asked because even though it, it, it's argued that 41 of them at some point in their life owned slaves. I would argue with one or two of those because their family owned slaves, but I haven't seen evidence that they themselves inherited the slaves that their family owned. Nonetheless, it doesn't really matter for semantics because the point is that if those guys then came out against slavery, if they freed their slaves, even though we could say having slaves was bad and they shouldn't have done it, we also should give them credit and praise them for going in a time when nobody in the world right? No nation in the world was opposing slavery. For these guys to go, slavery's wrong, and we want to end slavery in our state, we want to end slavery in our nation, they should get praised for having such yeah. a forward-thinking position. Today, we just don't talk much about yeah, absolutely. And their, even, their real stories. Yeah, even that period of the Founding Fathers, so much was done in the anti-slavery movement that that period around the revolutionary era past the Constitution is actually known as the First Emancipation, right, which is kind of a reference to the later Great Emancipation, right, Abraham Lincoln, but this period is known as the First Emancipation. We actually just got this in. This is a brand new artifact for us. What it is, is it is a engraving. This is John Hancock over here. Yep, showing John Hancock hosting an equality ball in 1793. 
And this is actually a, a piece attacking him for that. But it's interesting that John Hancock, he's a guy typically not necessarily included in the list or talked about as being anti-slavery, but right because he's a merchant, Boston, he's a rich guy. He is hosting while uh, governor of the state this ball supporting equality and liberty for African Americans. And, and this is one of the things too, as we're talking about the the story of the Founding Fathers, the story of slavery, one of the problems today is people so often try to oversimplify yeah. and they generalize. And, and I understand, we want to make it simple so people can understand and we generalize because it allows you to condense things. The problem is when you oversimplify and say all of them were, and then you generalize with all of them were, well, first of all, all of them weren't. And each one of them had specific stories. Some of them were pro-slavery, stayed pro-slavery their whole life. And, and we've documented that. The majority of them did not remain pro-slavery yeah. their whole life. And this is why you see many of them that never owned slaves, many of them that freed their slaves, some of them who didn't free their slaves but actually spoke against slavery, voted in favor of measures to end slavery, which to most people go, well, that's confusing because yeah. why wouldn't you free their slaves? And most of those guys lived in Virginia, mm -hmm. which there's a lot of interesting details with the so history much. of Virginia. And again, right, it's not, a, it's not a simple answer and it's not a simple story because humanity is not simple. You have to get into the nuance. You have to dig deep into the research which is, you know, what we're all here to do, um, and it's not well, what happens Yeah, there. and so one of the arguments from the 1619 Project is that the Founding Fathers, they, they wanted to separate from Great Britain to preserve slavery. The problem is many of them were already anti-slavery before the Revolution, many yep. of them freed their slaves before the Revolution, and many of them freed their slaves after the Revolution. So the, the, the positions just don't line up when you study the facts. We just don't know very much history anymore. And so one of the things, as, as we've been doing this kind of one-room schoolhouse, trying to walk through some of the history of our nation, hopefully you're being encouraged to know there's more to the story yeah. most times than, than what we hear in the simplification and these, these generalized statements. And we want to look beyond just what somebody says yeah. and go, wait a second, what's actually true? And start digging and looking for what's true. And so in the midst of this, we, we said it yesterday, I'm going to say it, hopefully the rest of the time going forward, don't just take our word for it. Go yeah. look this up, and once you find truth, promote and share truth with others. We believe that truth does exist. In fact, we would say that it exists in Jesus, where he says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. No man comes to the Father except through me. We believe truth does exist. It's rooted in who God is. It's rooted in Jesus. And we know ultimately truth helps bring freedom to people, which is also what Jesus said in John 8, 32, that you would know the truth, and the truth would set you free. Truth does help bring freedom in people's lives, but it also helps a nation be able to walk in the direction they should walk in once we know the truth of where we came from, of what we did wrong, but also what we did right. Because let's repeat what we did right, let's correct what we did wrong, and then let's make sure we continue to pursue truth as we're going forward. Absolutely. So if you guys have any questions, comments, put them in the comment box. We'd yeah. love to hear from you guys. Any prayer requests, we still are praying every day as a staff. Um, we would love to pray for you if something's going on. And we are believing that God's going to help bring an end to this thing as we're in the middle of Passover week. We're believing this with Easter coming up. We know that there's hope on the horizon because Jesus rose from the grave, right? So much hope for us as believers, way beyond what we have in this life. But while we're here, we're going to keep plugging along in what we're doing. God bless you guys, and we hope you're enjoying this.